Uh, today I'm going to teach you a trick that will allow you to find the square root of any number x in just a couple seconds. Now you can always use your calculator, however in a lot of cases you don't have a calculator in your pocket and you may be asked to or you may need to evaluate the square root of a number. All you need to do for this trick, uh, you need to at least know the properties of you know, the numbers from 1 to 12. For example, if you square 4, that'll give you 16. Therefore, the square root of 16 will give you 4. Uh, likewise, for 8, if I square the number 8, I get the number 64. That means if you take the square root of number 64, you're going to get the number 8. So if you know the basic properties of the numbers from 1 to 12, if you square them, and what their square roots are at the end, you'll be able to apply this technique. So let's start with an example. OK, let's start with an example. Um, first example, imagine you were asked to evaluate what is the square root of 18. Well, you don't know the square root of 18, but we do know the square root of 16. So can we use that? So the first thing you have to do to apply this method is you first find the number that's smaller, but that you know the square root. So you know the square root of 16 is 4. So we're going to write that number. That's going to be our leading number. So it's going to start with 4. The next thing you want to do is you want to find out what the fraction is. Now in order to find the fraction, it's very, very simple. Uh, you simply take the number 18, you subtract 16 away from it, so you're left with 2. And to get the denominator here, all we're going to do is you're simply going to multiply our number, our leading number, by 2. So you're going to do 4 times 2 is going to be 8. Uh, therefore, that's 4 and a quarter, which equals 4.25. That is the square root of 18. Well, actually, what I didn't tell you, maybe what I didn't emphasize is, this is not exactly true, but it's an approximation. And it's actually a very good approximation. If you substitute in your calculator, what you're going to find, so the calculator answer, for square root of 18 is going to be 4.24 and some other numbers. So that's pretty close. I think I can live with that difference. Let's try another example. Imagine we had a square root of 31. So to get the leading number again, you gotta find the number that you do know. So here I've given you all the, uh, all the square roots of the numbers from uh, 4 to 144 on the side here. So again, Find the one that's smallest. The one that's smaller than the square root of 31 is 25. So square root of 25, I know, is simply 5. So that's going to be our leading number for the square root. Now to get the decimal, or to get the fraction after the number 5, what you have to do is you subtract the two numbers here. So 31 minus 25 gives me 6. And it's 6 divided by, I simply double this number. 5 times 2 is 10. So the approximate value of the square root of 31 is 5.6. Now again, if you plug it in the, in the calculator, try that again, and you plug in square root of 31, what you're going to find is 5.568. And we got 5.6. That's pretty close. Not bad. For a method that only takes about a second to evaluate. I mean, once you get pretty good at it, um, you can do it pretty fast. So let's try one more case. What if you were asked to solve for the square root of the number 70? How would you do this one? Well, I don't know 70, but I do know that 64 is the one that's a little bit smaller than that. And that value is 8. So that means that the square root of 70 is going to start with 8. If I want to get the fraction, I take the difference. That's 6 divided by 2 times 8 is 16. So this is 8. I can take out uh, 2 at the top, 2 at the bottom. I'm left with 3 eighths. Whoa, 3 eighths. Let's try that again. Uh, which gives me 8 and 3, 7, 5. Uh, what does the calculator give? Let's cut and paste that down here. Uh, the calculator 
if you substitute that in there, what we're going to find is that the square root of 70 is going to be equal to 8.366. Wow. That's a pretty good method, man. I mean, that difference is pretty small, certainly smaller than 1%. Yeah, so I was a little curious about this method. So I went through and I plotted uh, the square root of any number, and I started from uh, 1 all the way to 144. Uh, so the blue line is basically just the function square root of x. That's the exact solution as you'd calculate, at least using a computer. What I then did is I applied the method, and I applied it to almost every number there, and I just put the value right on top of it. And actually the method works really, really well. There's a little bit of oscillation there around the exact solution, but it's pretty close. The dot is nearly on the line for every number uh, that I verified. Uh, the technique is, works really well. What I then wanted to do was I wanted to have a look at what is the difference? And really what I calculated was the percent error from the approximate solution versus the exact solution. This is what I calculated here. For all the numbers, ranging from 1 all the way to 144. And this is what I found. Actually, the largest error, I think, occurs for the number 6. It's a little bit more than 2%, which is still not that bad. But you could see from numbers, at least from... 10 all the way to 144, and I went even higher, I went all the way to 1,000. Uh, the error is below 1% using this method. It only takes you a couple seconds to evaluate. So that's pretty good. Now the cases where uh, the error goes to zero, uh, the error goes to zero when you have, for example, the square root of the number 144. Now that gives the exact solution. The approximate method and the exact solution will both give you 12. Uh, so the percentage error would be zero in that case. Now it drifts a little bit higher between those values where we actually know the square root or the exact value of the square root, but still it never gets very high, right? Always below 1%. Even here, here's the half a percent error. Uh, so using the technique is really fast and it gives you a pretty accurate result. Anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you like what I do, just subscribe to my channel.